introduce Sam Pemberton up to the stage, who is our founding sponsor. Sam? sponsoring the next TVOT in June 2012, um, with uh, lots of other sponsors here. So uh, uh, the reason for that is that this show is just so unique. Um, uh, this today here is bigger, better, the schedule is fantastic, the speaker list is terrific, uh, amongst the best you'll see. Uh, Tracy and her team do a phenomenal job, we love working with her and her whole team. So uh, a quick round of applause for Tracy. So uniquely, this show, I think, brings together uh, two different aspects of, of, of what we, we all want to know about, and, and that is that there's the most innovative and groundbreaking um, ideas of the show, so you can find out really what the next generation of, of stuff, if you will, in the, in the widest sense of television is going to be about. But it also, crucially, is grounded in the realities of what's actually being deployed and what's growing out. So that, that's one of the reasons the show is unique. We're very proud to sponsor the show along uh, with the uh, premier sponsor of our friends at Canoe. Um, and I think that it, it, it's true to say that interactive television is more real than it's ever been. Um, I'm not one of the people that says it's now and all that sort of stuff, but I have to say that there's now uh, an amazing number of interactive homes here in the States, which is really good, uh, really good to see. Um, so it's no wonder that advertisers, programmers, operators are all jumping in with an ever-accelerating commitment to interactivity in the home. We've really gone from the realms of technological possibility to a world of commercial realities and commercial opportunities. Um, and I think that great companies like Canoe are helping to make those realities true and, and are providing a, a massive opportunity to the advertising community. <coughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed today. I know I will. I'm looking forward to uh, catching up with, with old friends and new ones alike. So thanks a lot and enjoy the show. Sam, what's an industry-wide assumption that you'd like to do both? Um, well, there's a few, but um, for the sake of brevity, I'll try and narrow that down. Um, first of all, that, um, that interactive television on the TV competes with two-screen interactive TV. I don't think that's the case at all. I think they're both... Wait, no. Sorry. Um, I don't think that's the case. I think that two-screen is going to succeed over time as, as it develops out. It's still very nascent. But I think that will uh, complement the on-screen experience. And I think that broadcasters are pretty savvy as our advertisers and programmers and so on at working out what works well. So, so I think those so a two-screen experience will complement uh, um, the interactive experience. And then similar to some of the capital um, just said, in that people seem to love to knock the cable guys and, uh, and, and forget just how innovative cable is. Um, and you know, it's, it's amazing actually that, that we're right now at kind of 25 uh, million homes that the advertisers can reach. You know, I mean, to use the word scale, uh, we were joking about before. I think, you know, we really are there. It, it's, a, it's a case of going from a world of technology around the technological possibilities to really a world of, of commercial opportunity. And, and uh, uh, I'm really excited about it. I, I love being in this industry at the moment. I, I see the uh, change that's happened over the past uh, several years. I mean, just looking at analog to digital, that was quite spectacular. But and there's standard death to high death, but what we're witnessing now is much more exciting than I could have said. Sorry, Alex. Yeah. Do you all want to talk about assumptions or do you talk about something else? Do you have an assumption you'd like to debunk? Bob? Uh, well, uh, first of all, Sam, thank you for the kind words about the cable industry and our innovation. Um, I suppose, uh, picking up on that, I guess the one thing I'd like. So there are lots of examples in life uh, or in, in industries of uh, people try something and it didn't work, okay, they throw it out and then 
and somebody figures out how to get the formula right, and then it succeeds. That, that's what's that's happening there, right? So yeah. within the framework of EMIF, for example, mm -hmm. you know, you can throw a hell of a lot of spaghetti at the wall to, within the EMIF framework. It's, um, just because it's a standard doesn't necessarily stop innovation. It's just a different type of innovation. I, I think each of you could say in two words, right? two or three words of chops. What's your pet cause barrier that you'd like to see gone by next year? And let me restate that. If you could state what, your, your, what the barrier is out there that you think needs to be removed in the next year or two, it must, in order for you to do your business better. What is that going to be? Sam? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, two I'll, words. I'll come back two to words. That. First of all, I'd like to just agree with what Peter was saying a moment ago, because um, I, I totally agree with that, that interactive television is way more than just advertising. Advertising is really important, but you know, we play out um, one that we're about to talk about, the X Factor in the UK, it's a blockbuster show. And uh, a huge amount, unfortunately, the stats aren't um, public, but a huge number of viewers choose to engage with that show. They vote on that show for their favourite act uh, to go through to next week. Now, when we see that, what we, what we then see is when we're playing out a Honda commercial during the, uh, during the act, people have got used to interacting with their television. So, it's a real, um, it's a double win, if you like, because you can, you can get the viewer interacting with the show and then with the advertising as well. I think they really complement each other, which I, I, I totally agree with. What's the barrier? What, what's the barrier you want to remove? And then, uh, in terms of barriers, um, I, well, firstly, I, I think that innovation, we were talking about innovation a moment ago, maybe mm -hmm. I didn't answer that right around, the um, standards often can well innovation. I mean, we take it for granted on the cable platform that we can watch HD in three rooms and it's a perfect picture, perfect sound, Dolby Digital, the whole deal. We take that for granted because the cable guys and the satellite guys, so they know what they're doing. That it's a managed service. And then the reason that the set-top box doesn't crash out every five minutes is because folks work very, very hard at places like cable labs and so on. Um, to create standards, but when you create a standard for something as massive as this table, you, you inevitably have to make choices. So the very greatest, latest thing that you can, you know, I could sit up there and tell you some great ideas that we've got. And so, you know, it, it, you have to, you have to. It, I think Gary was nodding. It, it, it's tough to get the the standards and the, um, <coughs> the innovation to coexist really nicely, and that, that's quite an art to go through. In terms of barriers, I'll let everyone else answer them. <laughs> yes. So, um, so when it comes to standards, um, the, the poster child for effective standardization is Topsys. And one of the reasons that succeeded is because you had a very narrow degrees of freedom. So I just think getting some scale starts to drive adoption, starting to drive adoption starts to train everybody on what the possible economic models can be and how they can be leveraged in ways we never thought of three or four years ago because we have real world experience and we're making it work. Yeah, and, and you have to start somewhere as well. So the, the um, educated the viewer, uh, what I loved about the, um, the X Factor side of things that I was saying about a moment ago is that the, the, the host is actually stood up telling people to interact, so you know, it's, it's educating the viewer, obviously. And I think still in the States, it's very difficult to, um, for the programming to get out to mass scale. So, you know, okay, you start somewhere, and, and Knut's doing a great job of breaking those barriers down for the advertisers to get out to scale. Um, and I'm, I'm quite confused that that next step's happening with the programmers to get not just advertising out, but, but, but actually productions as well. And uh, that's, that's definitely a barrier I'd love to see, you know, we're working on that. Um, well, I think all of us are here to try to understand how we can create efficiency and to bring all of our services to scale, uh, actually more services to scale. Uh, I, we need to close. We're at the end of our event. If you want to say... <laughs>